Very lovely evening. Welcome. This is Sports Zone live on Joy Prime. My name is Fentio Tahiru Fentio. Uh, welcome to the show. We are on from now till 10.30 p.m. reviewing and looking back on the best action from the world of sports. The show is proudly brought to you by Johnny Walker, Syntex Tank, as well as Kivo, 4-in-1 Gary Mick. What's coming over the next 90 minutes? Quite a lot. Premier League champions for the fourth consecutive season. History makers, Manchester City, won it on the final day. Arteta and his Arsenal team will have to fight again next year. We will look back on an incredible last day of the Premier League season. Uh, elsewhere, of course, uh, there was some boxing down in Saudi Arabia. That will feature very heavily uh, on the show today. Alexander Usyk, for the first time in the four-belt era, can call himself the undisputed heavyweight champion after defeating Tyson Fury. That's also still to come here uh, on the show. And if you have some time, F1, of course, <laughs> Max Verstappen, extending his lead at the top of the championship to 48 points after victory at Imola uh, in the uh, F1 or Formula One, if you like. So there's all of that to come, plus your messages. We have awards here to hand out. Your team of the season, uh, who you believe was the flop of the season, best player of the season, signing of the season. The guys have all been putting their names together. We show you everybody's pick here. Sicho's pick, Daniel's pick, my own pick, and all of that. Who you believe should be where? Who do you think was your coach of the season, your signing of the season, your most disappointing player of the season, uh, the overachievers of the season? All of that stuff uh, to come here, of course, on the show. So we have a very, very packed show for you tonight. In the Bundesliga, of course, uh, Leverkusen became the first team ever in the history of the Bundesliga to go an entire season on beating. They are now the Invisibles of Germany. Can they make it? Uh, the Invisible treble winners. <laughs> treble Invisibles. That's what it is. They've won one trophy. They're in the final of the Europa League and in the final of DFP Copa, where they are on beating as well. So if they were to win those three, where do you place them in the history books? And would they be greater than the Invisibles of Arsenal from 2003, 2004? So that's all to come. Plus your messages. Today I've got my tablet back, so do send me a message. Use the hashtag uh, SportsZone on Twitter or X, if you prefer, also. Send me a WhatsApp message, 0240 0910330, 0240-910330. And, of course, we'll share your views with the rest of our viewers from across the globe. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. This is Sports Zone on Joy Prime. Your messages just are welcome on 0240-910-330. That's the WhatsApp number. Also, leave me a message on Twitter, X. Use the hashtag Sports Zone. Today, we will expose prophets, uh, the real prophets and the fake prophets. Listen, don't worry. Everything, I have everything under control because some people have come here and have given you false hopes for the past six weeks. Today, we'll expose them. The show is brought to you by Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker, keep walking. Also, Kivo, uh, Gary Sokins. Uh, Sokins, are yet easy? And then our favorite, Syntex Tank. Are you strong? Are you tough? The gentlemen are here with me. Teacher Fair, Philip Achrim. Vince. Daniel Cranty is here. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Ah, uh, welcome to the show. Moza. Listen, first of all, guys, let me congratulate myself for, uh, for, for predicting Man City to be champions of the Premier League. I was the only one who said what was obvious. Anybody with eyes could see it. But some people said, no! They, they, they don't have... The, 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 the striker is struggling. They are conceding too many goals. They are not, they are not the same Man City from a few years ago. As Samala, when we did the show from eight, eight matches to go, they're running. They say, oh, they'll drop points here. They'll drop. They won every single match from that moment till the end of the season. The only team to do that. The rest of them all flopped. So congrats to myself. I've officially earned the title of the true prophet. No wonder I'm the host prophet. The rest of them invited prophet from Zimbabwe and, and from 
South Uganda, oh. problem. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> let's go on with the show. You have nothing to say. Oh. You want to say something? You have nothing to say. We'll get ah, to it. OK, we'll get to it. Please, please, please. Relax. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> oh. oh, Man City. Man City, I've done it. Guys, we'll get to that. But listen, man. I haven't even started a show, and somebody's already started a very interesting conversation. Mm. And I would like to read his message first. All right. OK, he sent his message in at exactly 9.04 PM while I was introducing the show. Wow. Yes. And this is a message from, OK, um, hold on. Hey, champion. Hey, my message box. Kofi Nelson in Ash. Lebanon. I don't know if he's Ashtown Lebanon. Ashaman. Ashaman. He's an Ashaman Lebanon. Ah, okay, Ashaman Lebanon. He says, and ladies and gentlemen, listen carefully. He says, hey, why is my message not? Okay. I think Leverkusen's invincibles are more impressive than Arsenal's invincibles. And he says, please hear me out. He says, now, here are his reasons. Now, Arsenal played 38 games compared to Leverkusen's 34 matches. This is what he says. That's his point number one. Two, both teams were able to gather 90 points. Now, the difference here is that Leverkusen achieved this record by playing less games Arsenal played four games more, and yet they got the same number of points. Now, Leverkusen played less matches than Arsenal and still managed to score more goals. They scored 89, compared to Arsenal's 73 goals in 38 games. Now, look at the draw matches between both teams. Arsenal drew 12 of their matches going into double figures. Leverkusen drew only six of their games. Now, compare the squad quality, he says, assembled by these two teams, including the coaches. And you realize how average the Leverkusen team is compared to that of the Arsenal squad. This Leverkusen team had never won any league title until this amazing achievement of invincibility. In fact, the season before, they were facing relegation. Considering all these facts and figures, let no one gaslight you into thinking that the record of the Arsenal Invincibles is better than the achievement of this Leverkusen team. If anything at all, Leverkusen's invincibility reigns supreme. Kofi Nelson, Ashdown, Lebanon. Uh, that's a brilliant piece of work that is done there, um, Kofi. Uh, Kofi, and, you uh, spot it. And I agree, I agree with... I agree with um, with everything he said, um, I, I, th I, think, I think that, yes, you, you also want to compare the strength of the league at the time. Um, the Premier League and the Bundesliga, what strength it is. But as we speak now, for Bayer Leverkusen to win the Bundesliga in a league that has Roma, um, Bayern Munich, it is tough. It is difficult for them to do that in the number of points they've, they've amassed. What, what, for, what for me will make Bayern's season even more impressive than Arsenal's season if they, is, if they go on to win the two other Cups they are going to play the final four. If they go on to win the DFB Pokal, yeah. and if they go on to win the Europa League, that takes them to a different level because Arsenal only were unbeaten in the league. But if this team goes all the way to win the two other Cups, they would two have games been, away from them. Yeah, two games. They would have been unbeaten the entire season across all competition that they played. And that, for me, is a different level. Nobody said that. By, by Leverkusen don't win the league. They don't win titles. They win nothing. So for their first time, to go on and win it by not losing any game, I put them right up there, right up there. No, oh, obviously they'll go down as a great team. I just, I'm talking about the, or thinking about the qualities of the, the different leagues. And we know that the, uh, the quality of the Premier League, as it stands, the German Bundesliga is number four in the coefficient rankings. Um, we know Celtic have done it a couple of times, UV have done it, Porto has done it. The reason why those teams even in their invincible campaigns are not compared to us now was because of the strength of the Premier League and how difficult it is. So in as much as I, I obviously acknowledge uh, the feat that Leverkusen has done, I think Arsenal are in a, 
in a, in a different league of their own. So I will, I will always prefer the Arsenal Invincible season too. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, and that's a conversation we will keep going here. What about you watching us at home? So it's really good to get the show started on a debate mode. Kofi Nelson is splitting heads here. I'm sure not just in the studio, because clearly these two disagree. <laughs> But also, you watching at home, I'm sure you're thinking, uh, okay, maybe he has a point. Or, uh, yeah, but that's the Bundesliga. But can you do that in England? <laughs> uh, they said that about Pep <laughs> when, he, when he won the Bundesliga three years in a row. They said it was a farmer's league and that he couldn't do that in England. So Alex Fergus is on record, so I've said he would find it difficult in the Premier League because the Premier League is a difficult league. He's coming, and he's not found it difficult. In fact, he's found it easier than anywhere else he's ever been. He's won more league titles in England than anywhere else he's ever been. He's been there eight seasons. He's only lost the title twice, and one of it was his first season when he was rebuilding his team. So, in all fairness, you know, it just looks like absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible from Pep Guardiola. Six Premier League titles. That is, that is ridiculous. But we'll get to that, okay? Um, let's talk have Confederation Cup, uh, shall we? Because, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Let's talk Ghana Premier League before we get into the Confederation Cup because we know Zamalek are champions of the Confederation Cup. But let's talk about House of Hope versus Adriana Star. They lost that match by one goal to nil at home, second consecutive defeat at home. But what's more important is that was six defeats in the last eight matches of the season for House of Hope. Take a look at the highlights. All right, so that's that. I, I mean, I, nobody knows what's going on with House of Hope. Not even their coach, because Watara, I'm sure you've all seen the post-match press conference. He says, I don't understand the players. They have no motivation. I don't get it. Like, he says, basically calling them average players. I think there's something about, there's something about <clears throat> title-winning teams or traditional clubs and, and the way seasons unfold. The moment title folk know that they are not competing for anything. They won't win the cup, they won't mm. win the league, as well as Kotoko. These are teams where all they live for is to play to win, historically. And even in more recent years, only three years ago, Atafuk were champions, only, uh, only uh, the season before that, or the season after that, Kotoko were champions. So the club in the more recent history know that they play to win titles. Atafuk won the FA Cup as well two seasons ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then won the FA Cup before, back-to-back -back FA Cup. So in more recent times, they've, they've won things. Kotoko as well, as I said, were recently champions. Now, these are teams that sometimes, when they are not playing to win, the effort is not the same. If, if Hearts of Folk were within four points of the top, I guarantee you attitude from the players, the, the way the fans would be reacting to their games would have been different. Same for Kotoko. It takes, it takes a certain extra motivation to get players in these clubs to keep going. And it's not only Hearts of Folk and Kotoko. It happens everywhere in the world. When it becomes obvious, that's... When it becomes obvious, there's nothing to play for. We saw even in Italy with Juventus. They were, they were in contention for the league until they played Inter Milan. And once Inter Milan beat them in early January, and they knew top four was sealed, they knew they were not going to win the league, we saw the results. It just went down. Yeah. The same players, same coach and everything, but the motivation to go into games were never the same. And I have a feeling, I might be wrong, but I have a feeling that's what is happening to Hearts of Folk. Uh, let's listen to the Hearts of Folk coach, um, Abu Bakar Ouattara. And you understand what I'm talking about, because he was absolutely fuming after the game. We are playing badly. We don't have any motivation today. I don't understand what happened. Uh, very disastrous. Disappointed completely. The key players who come out for nothing. All the plants are down. Uh, very difficult. But these boys, I can't understand them. Today you are good, tomorrow you are bad. I don't understand what happened. But today is a very bad game. I don't have anything to say. Very bad game. We played 90 minutes without any shoot on the goalkeeper. Any shoot, one shoot. I am not happy. Wow. I mean, listen, I like coaches like this. You can tell that he is... He cares. Look, he's very passionate. Yes. Remember when he came in after the first three games, spoke about returning hard to folk back to uh, the dominance uh, a club in, in Ghanaian football. Remember after the Karela game, he went to the fans, basically told them that these are these the are materials, materials I, have. I have and I have to work with them. 
that for me shows a certain uh, level of he's not too satisfied with the players that he has. Um, Koopman also spoke about recruitment very early in the yeah. season. Before he got in, he was like, oh, he liked the material. Very early in the season, he also basically said that this is what he had to work with. Then now he's mentioning it again. So, to be honest, when you look at the, the squad list of Hearts of Hook, very little experience. Yes, there's talent, but for a club like Hearts of Hook, you need some, you need some figures in there, some winners in there. And for me, that's, where, that, that's what disturbs me the most about this assembly of Hearts of Hook, yeah. uh, uh, the, this assembly of the, uh, the squad this season. If you go back a couple of seasons ago, when remnants of that uh, league winning side, we saw them the following season, some of them took the club to the FA Cup title. When you are building teams, you don't completely scrap and then yeah. start afresh. You should still be able to keep some figures in there to at least there are some figures. They're just the wrong. They're just the wrong ones. You don't. <laughs> no, the guy is he's anyway. I don't see it. But it's, it's it's really not the best. It's it is really not the best. And again, I think I also I I, I Citro made a fantastic point. At this point in the season, what are they playing for? What's what's the motivation? Why should you go and jump into tackles and try and beat Adriana if they are just going to finish mid table? By this time, players have locked out, thinking about next season. It's what four three games to the yeah, end of the season, they are not going to be relegated. They are not going to win the league. There's nothing like top four. There's nothing like... So, obviously, they will log. They will and, log. And the manager said it. He, they lack motivation. Yeah. And he, he doesn't know why the players won't turn up. today they are good. Tomorrow, tomorrow they are yeah. there's, there's, It's just, it's just that. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mentality thing for, for teams that players that play in big clubs. Um, how, Kotoko seem to have turned the tide uh, the last... Three games, they had not lost, obviously, until they met Breakup Chelsea. Uh, Samuel Boydou and his Breakup Chelsea team. And every time Boydou meets Kotoko, it's always like he has something to prove. And he left it very, very late to beat Kotoko by two goals to one. That is a fantastic finish. What a way to end that game. Um, first defeat in four for Kotoko. Uh, the head coach, uh, Ogum, said that uh, the defeat is due to intimidation. I don't know from who. Um, but Kotoko, down in 10th position, no chance whatsoever uh, of winning the league title. Again, same issues apply and cut across. But I want to show you results from the weekend. Very interesting results uh, from the weekend. And the most interesting one is uh, Heart of Lions' victory against Dreams FC away from home. Hmm. In Dau, uh, two goals to one. That means Lions leave the relegation zone, but dreams are back in it. The good, well, dreams are not back in it. The team that is back in the relegation zone is uh, Great Olympics. It's not looking good for them. They lost to Legon City by two goals to one, so they're in the relegation zone. Uh, Nations FC won one nil against Accra Lions, but so did the team on top as well. Summer Techs, they thumped before Quattrano by three goals to nil to maintain their seven-point lead at the top of the table with just four matches to go. So certainly it looks like the title is headed to Samra Boy. And what a season that would be uh, for them. Um, let's confirm what the table looks like for you at the end of match week 30. So there it is, 55-48, seven points difference between Samra Tex and Nations. So Jana starts with 46 points. Uh, they have a very slim chance of uh, usurping anyone whatsoever. Mediama have jumped to fourth position, the defending champions. Although just by Israel Man, who seem to have fizzled out a little bit, but they've got a, an FA Cup final to play in Israel Man, so they'll be excited about that. See Kotoko down in 10th, uh, also for below them, uh, it's in 12th as well. Now, look at the relegation zone. Real Tamale United seem like they have a game in hand, uh, and that game is against Dreams FC, um, but it's not looking good for them, uh, RTU. But for Kwatano and Great Olympics, the other three teams in the relegation zone. So this is very, very tight indeed. Dreams FC are also very close there, but notice that they have as many as three games in hand. So they might not be in as big a trouble as the rest of the teams over there. All right. Um, we will go to Karim for Ghanaian players abroad. But it, it's worth reminding you that Zamalek uh, champions of the CAF Confederation Cup, and they won that obviously with a 1 0 victory against RS Bekan. And the first leg ended 2 1 uh, in 
in Morocco, and they won the return leg 1 0, which means that they get the, uh, the, the victory uh, on uh, the away goal rule, uh, certainly. So uh, that's a great thing for them. And that's the second time they've won this trophy. They were last champions in the 2018-2019 or 2018-2019 season, where, again, they beat Bekan. So the same position uh, twice. So congratulations to them. But by the way, the CAF Champions League uh, final as well between Esperance and Ali. The first leg uh, was played on Saturday in Rades, Tunisia, and it ended nil-nil. Mm -hmm. And that trophy will be determined on Saturday in Cairo. You know, you know, you know, what, know that, what it you, means. You know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means. Just, you just know it. Um, a, a, an opportunity, of course, to uh, uh, to, to extend their the, the, the record the title round to as many as twelve. They have eleven now, uh, I believe. All right, uh, Karim. Yes. Sir. Yes. All correct. All good. All good. Okay, listen, the Premier League has come to a conclusion, but that wasn't the only exciting thing involving Ghanaian players. Obviously, Kudus Mohamed scored a spectacular goal. We'll get to that. Uh, so many Ghanaian players are winning trophies and continuing to win league titles elsewhere. Uh, take us through some of those highlights. I'm talking about winning trophies. It is, it is only better that I start off with Barbara Aman. Mm. Mm -hmm. you, why are you winking at, almost winking at Danny? <laughs> <laughs> he's excited. He's, he's excited at the mention of our man. And everyone should be looking at what he's gone through, not having game time at Chelsea now. He's just signed for them permanently, but in his career, that is the club he has played most games for. That is Pauk in the Greek League. And that is, they won 2 1 against Aris yesterday, and they won the title by urging AEK Artis, who lost their penultimate game last weekend, and Pauk are champions. Bawara Man is a Greek champion. He won the Super Cup with them when he was on loan there, and now he has won the league. He's not just added to the numbers that they've won it. He's played an integral role to it. Mm -hmm. 28 games he's played for them in the league. In those 28 games, he has scored six goals. That is the highest ever he has scored for any team in his career and has provided three assists, that is in all nine goal contributions for Park in that title winning run. And also, if you are looking at Baba Rahman, we are made to believe that he's very poor at defending. When it comes to the Black Stars, a lot of people don't really count on him to do that defensive work. But if you are looking at um, Park as a team, he's the player that has the most uh, tackle winning ratio in terms of the whole team of Pauk. Mm. That is, he's averaging 1.8 tackles, one per game uh, for Pauk throughout the season. That is ranking him number one among his Pauk teammates. If you're also taking that to the whole of the Greek Super League, out of over 200 players there that has played at least some minutes, he's ranking um, number 12. That is not bad for him. And a, a tackle number winning. 12 in terms of what? Tackle tackles, tackles, yeah. 90, 90 minutes per 90 minutes. Yeah. That is 12, 1.8. That's high, game. considering his team yeah. is normally, normally yeah. very dominant yeah. in yeah. games. The yeah. team he's, is had, he's had a very good season. Always, so yeah. well done to him. Greek champion. Yes. Uh, alongside the Nigerian captain. Uh, Truce Ikong. <laughs> <laughs> Truce Ikong as well. Uh, he plays. And for looking at the success rate of that passing, that is around 75. It's not a small figure. Yeah. Let's go through the rest of your team very then, quickly. Then, um, let me, the two fullbacks are really playing integral roles for their teams. Then, Denis Odor, he also scored a really interesting goal for, that is, Club Brugger. They won 1-0 against Anderlecht. Detroit, taking them, uh, them down from the uh, Belgian Super League, uh, Belgian League table, that is now, if um, Club Brugger, they avoid defeat in their final game of the season, Denis Odoi will be champion. Denis Odoi will be a champion, and what a role he will play in that. Then um, Jonas Aji, talking about title winners, now he has helped, that is Basel, who were in the semifinals of the Conference League last season. They were now fighting a legation in the um, Swiss Super League. Uh, that is, yes, Swiss Super League, and he's played an integral role for them, and they are surviving almost with one game to go. Then Mohamed Salis, he wrapped up the season with uh, Monaco with a 4-1 win over Montpellier then. And they are in the Champions League, yes. cemented Champions League football for next season. We'll be playing season. in the Champions League next season. Then uh, Michael Bedou scored for Ellsberg, but they lost 2-1 to guys. Then Ibrahim Sulemane played the full 90 minutes 
for Cagliari and they won 2-0 against Sassuolo. It's Almost, of victory. course, it's to surviving relegation. Yeah. I don't need to talk much about Mohamed Kudus. We'll since. talk to you. We'll get to yes. Kudus, yeah. So, what a spectacular goal. Um, then Semenyo, he Kudus doing his thing then. Um, he was also very good for, that is Bournemouth in their 2-1 defeat to Chelsea. Then Kelvin Yabua. Also scored. Uh, yeah, but didn't he say he won't play for us? Yeah, so, but he's there? seen that the possibility of playing for um, Germany, is, uh, Italy is not that great, and he's now turning attention to possibly that is getting. That's Tony Yabo's nephew. Yes. Yeah. Looking yeah. at getting a call in. They, uh, that is standard league. They lost to Gent 4 1, but he scored a freak of a goal for them. Then there are some few numbers I want to look at in the Premier League for Ghanaian players. That is um, Mohamed Kudus, uh, Jordan Ayu, and then Antoine Semenyo. If you are looking at it overall, the player with the most goal, um, goal contributions for a Ghanaian is Mohamed Kudus. That is after scoring that spectacular goal against Man City, he's now had um, eight goals and six assists, taking his tally to 14 in total. Then Jordan Ayu, looking at him, he has scored four goals and provided seven assists for Crystal Palace throughout the season. And he's also now having 11 goals contributions throughout the season. Then throughout the season as well, he has played three positions. That is center forward. Uh, he has no wingers, midfield, so just shuffling, shuffling him around those positions. And he's the uh, most creative player for Palace throughout the season. That is the player with the most assists for them. That is seven. If you're also looking at goals plus assists, he's ranking number four for them throughout the season. Then Antoine Semenyo, his, that is his joint best. That is his eight goals in the Premier League this season. That is the joint best he has scored for um, any club he has played for in the league. Now he's had it's eight... His entire career, the most goals he's scored in the season. That is eight. joint, joint best. Eight goals in a single season, then two assists. He has also played in four different positions. Then Mohamed Kudus also played in six different positions throughout the season for West Ham and the most productive... Six? Yes, the most productive of where, them. Where, where, where? <laughs> How do you count the six? Attacking midfielder, that is the number 10 rule, right winger, left winger, and okay. he's also played the midfield. He's, just, he's so versatile. Has he started games in those rules, or he's in the course of games has been... He has started games in those rules. Okay. So the most he has played is in the right wing role, and that is in a position he has scored 14 goals. Then the, that is just a summary of everything in the Premier League. All right, fair enough. Thank you very much, Karim. You already uh, said a lot about Babaraban, so we will not be getting into that. But congratulations to him. He's a league winner as well in uh, Greece. All right, uh, talking about league winners, the Premier League gave us a winner on the final day and it was Man City and a newly minted Premier League player of the season, Phil Foden, who stepped up and gave them what had never happened before, a fourth consecutive Premier League title. Let's look at the highlight. Mm. Amazing. He said it's in here. That is the difference between them and Arsenal. Okay. Um, speaking of Arsenal, um, now we know that Manchester City are champions. The, for the past eight weeks, there was somebody who kept telling us that in the spiritual realm, he has seen that Arsenal would win the Premier League title. He said it multiple times. If you say I'm lying, take a look at this. So God does the impossible. When God said it was going to rain, yeah. <laughs> and he told Noah it was going to, to rain, yeah. he should build an ark. It was a, a, a dry season. That's right. It wasn't rainy season, no. Mm -hmm. At that time, there was no global warming. So no. There was no <laughs> surprises. No surprise, really. The climate was, surprise was clear. Season. It was dry season. Dry season. It was dry season. The people it say it's not possible. They were mocking Noah. And then, ta, <laughs> it rained. And it rained for one day. It rained for 40 days. That's right. 40, 40 days and 40 nights. And 40 nights. I have seen. What about Noah? I have seen That's right. Martin Odegaard taking the trophy and lifting it <laughs> on the 20th anniversary of the Invincibles. And you see, for me, <laughs> this weekend, I was really, I, it was funny. Did you see this result in the realm? 
Spiritually, I saw it before the game. No, I see the Kenyans put. This guy. Look, viewers. You said Aston Villa are so poor away from home. Yeah. So this is not Arsenal, a game that they are going to I win. Arsenal win. blows them apart. That was logical analysis. Yes. You before combine the, logic with the spirit. Before the game. And came to the conclusion before they the would game, win. I tweeted something. Before you are in trouble. You genuinely sitting here in your heart of hearts, mm -hmm. hand on chest, mm -hmm. believe that from this moment on, mm -hmm. with Arsenal top, only on goal difference, and Man City just a point behind, with Liverpool and Man City chasing Arsenal, Arsenal have the cojones to stay top and go on and win the league. Friend, I explained this to you at the start of the season. And I said, I actually said this to you off camera. I said it um, last Thursday. I told you guys, I told you again um, last week. It's two parts. The first part was this weekend. Arsenal go on top this weekend. And if Arsenal finish the game week on top, that is 50%. The next half of the job will be on 31st of March, the end of this month, when Arsenal go to the Etihad. Arsenal will face Chelsea before that. They face, uh, yeah, they face Chelsea. They will beat uh, Chelsea. They will beat Chelsea. They beat Porto, they beat Chelsea. <laughs> they go into that game at the Etihad. And it's not about going to get a point against Man City. I'm sitting here, I'm telling you, Arsenal will go to the Etihad and will win. It's going to shock everybody. And when that happens, it's done and dusted. I've told you at the start of the season, so, they will win the league. Arsenal. We'll go on and win the Look, league. I'm telling you, they'll win the league. <laughs> I am still shocked. <laughs> I'm still shocked. <laughs> Congratulations, Prophet. This is a trophy. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's not, <laughs> that, this is a trophy that Od Odegaard lifted. <laughs> this is a trophy that he saw that Odegaard lifted. You see? Hey, people can't talk. You see? People can't talk. You see, in life, there are ups and there are downs. <laughs> <laughs> See, football, football is a very interesting sport. You and, knew that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And for me, I will credit myself <laughs> for having a, you said what, well, Cahoon is, eh? <laughs> <laughs> to back Arsenal at the start of the season. Yeah. An Arsenal team with uh, no Premier League title experience. Yeah. Uh, basically, no trophy experience because the group that won the FA, FA Cup, they are gone. gone. And back them, and they took the Premier League all the way to the last thing. Lost it by two points. At least that was close to me. <coughs> and you see, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I, no, I backed, no I have backed the prediction from day one. I didn't change. This man! The, uh, DK, this is the trophy. This is the trophy for an impressive season. Oh, thank you! Finishing two points behind you. But you see, trophy. you see that the, the poster, the poster, the <laughs> yeah. four poster, yeah. which has the chief prophet <laughs> and the two of us who are associate it's, pastors. Yeah. Okay. We save you, you understand? <laughs> when you are the general overseer, you... Oh, oh, hey, uh, what are you again? Bena, can you show the text <laughs> what Fento predicted at the start of the season? That's not Fento's prediction. Even in FIFA, even in FIFA. It will happen. Even in FIFA, this thing will happen. Arsenal fail. Chelsea fail. And have you seen... To be fair, if you remove Newcastle from the top, who will be top? Boga. Hey, Zichu, if you remove Newcastle... Boga, 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 Boga. Who will be top? And you, no, 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 you see, come back, come back to studio, I'm addressing the people of God. Now, I'm so proud of my prediction. But I really have my prediction. Come back to studio, I'm, I'm addressing the, the, the people of God. Yeah. And you see, typical, have you seen the TikTok pastors? Hey. The TikTok pastors who say so. You remember the guy who said, hey, this one will win election, then he came back and... Yeah. Typical in that fashion. <laughs> this guy just changed his prediction. Oh, <laughs> oh Man City will win. And then at the end of the season, yesterday, he's pretending as if ah, the church, the church, they won't play tight. <laughs> they are not jokers. Hey, Benaya. They are not jokers. Uh, hold on, hold on. Benaya, show Daniel Crantis' prediction at the beginning of the season. It wasn't just me. Who predicted you? I said Arsenal. Arsenal, he's been back in Arsenal since. Oh, no, no, no. I no, never no, no. changed my prediction. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. This is what. Yes! yes. Ask if you remove Arsenal, who is there? Uh, Man City. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Danny had, Danny had uh, one out of 
Six. Chelsea finished fifth, yes. Yeah, so that's one out of six. I got three out of four in top four. That's right, that's fair. Yes. No, no, no. In, fact, in, 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 in positions. In fact, I got no, four out of six. In positions. Top six. Positions matter. Yeah, you are right. saying Arsenal were going to finish. Let's look at it. So, uh, but what is noticeable so is everybody is predicting Man United above Chelsea in all of them, including yeah. myself. Right. Daniel too put Man United way above Liverpool, way above Chelsea. So let's look at let's, let's look at Sicho's prediction at the beginning of the season. Okay. Uh, uh, from TT. From, from Sicho's from. okay, Sicho. Instead they will get you, you pick yours. The, the most accurate of all, you don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> We'll come back to Sicho's <laughs> prediction. Wow! But let's take. Uh, <laughs> listen, I, I really don't want to waste anybody's time with the Arsenal Everton highlights. They did their job. Yeah. Uh, they won the game. What I want to do is um, uh, to take what Ateta said mm. and how it feeds into what kind of mentality mm. uh, Arsenal will be approaching next season with. So after the game, obviously they won. Sicho, this is your prediction, by the way. Man City to win the league. Yeah, congratulations. Arsenal to finish second. Ta. Liverpool, Liverpool to finish third. Ta. Chelsea to finish sixth. Ta. Four oh, versus, versus. I'm okay. finish fourth. Oh, it's okay. Sometimes you have to let Hagi. people enjoy. Hagi. Yeah. Hagi. Hagi. <laughs> you have to let people enjoy. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be too. Actually, people this start calling me for, well for, for, well for tips. Well yeah, four out of six. Ta, 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 ta. These, are, these were our predictions at the beginning of the season. So, those of you who follow us on social media, you would have seen this. Yeah. Right yeah. before. In fact, the template was there for viewers to do. The people who are laughing at me, you to bring your own. <laughs> <laughs> you to bring your own LSD. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is what Ateta said when he addressed the Emery squad after the game. Let's take a listen. Oh, they've had a good season. 89 points? Yeah. Uh, 89 points. Um, they, they are nowhere close to the, the most impressive team to finish second, by the way. So no. Fair enough, right? Liverpool's in 97. Ah, brother. People have done 90-something. Yeah, 90 90 90 90 90 you get 89, you lose your are crying. <laughs> 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 oh, Nobody get 97. Is a, no win. No win in the league. Is a, they take chucking body. Real Madrid have done 96 before too. Yeah. They no win. As yeah, yeah, go, yeah. Get the season, I think Tito, eh? yeah. Villanova. Yeah. 400 points. Uh, be hard. It was a weekend of goodbye, so I want to take you around the grounds. Let's go to Chelsea. They beat Bournemouth 2-1 to secure Europa League, uh, sorry, Europa Conference League football next season. They finished set. Uh, but then they had to say farewell to Thiago Silva. Once a blue, always a blue. Blue is the color. But listen, uh, four years at Chelsea, and it looks like, or oh, it feels like he had been there forever. The respect, obviously he's going off to Filomenese. He said in the speech that he hopes to come back one day, and he says his children are still Ch Chelsea players. He hopes they can make it to the top. Um, what a guy, what a player. Yeah, incredible career he's had, Thiago Silva. Um, his, his just his personality is oozes class. Yeah. You know the way he goes about defending. He's hard. He's solid, but still very neat and calm under pressure. And and you know you look at the career he's had with Brazil, the national team. Wherever he's been, he's almost left the place. So he's left the place as a legend with AC Milan, the the, the team that won the the the, the Serie A before Juve started that crazy run. And then he went to Paris Saint Germain. He's a legend. There. He's come to Chelsea. He's only been there for four years, but as you mentioned, he's, he's coming in there as a legend. And when he came to Chelsea, the one of the trophies that he was looking for was the Champions League, and he actually helped Chelsea as much as the club helped him to achieve that. He's won everything that he, every footballer would want to win in club football, and that for him is amazing career he's had. He desperately wanted that Champions League trophy. Yeah, he got it. The final didn't go according to his own personal plan. Yeah, he would be happy that they won. Look, a win is a win. Yeah, he went close a couple of occasions at PSG. It just didn't happen for him. In fact, when he was leaving PSG to come to Chelsea, saying he wanted to win the Champions League, it sounded a bit funny. Yeah, but it happened, and uh, he played a key part. Whether or not whatever no, no, happened no, in the, the final, but was, he was yeah. he played a solid part in that, and uh, yeah. Really happy for him, Chelsea legend. Look, football legend, in fact. Football yeah, legend. football legend. Uh, Proper word. I remember him very well from his days at AC Milan. That um, was Thiago Silva. It's uh, let's take another farewell. At the end of an era, and the himself. beginning of another. Clopus. Okay. Clop. Clop. Hey, my yeah, man. Clop is leaving. <laughs> Liverpool. One my day. man. He, he's gone. They've been doing a series of parties. But his farewell. Klopp was. Uh, look, let me not be the one to tell you. Look at Klopp at Anfield. Oh, slow. La 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 la. Oh, 
onslaught. Look, onslaught was announced. The club was the one who announced him at Anfield. And he says, Liverpool will be fine. You're in good hands. And he started singing the guy's name. Today, Liverpool announced him as their new manager. Onslaught, another bald guy in the Premier League. Hmm. What have we done to you? Are you bald? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very bald. He's tricky. That's not the huggy and slot pep kind of I've ball. decided not to go that way, but, yeah. <laughs> but I'm capable of that. Okay, okay, I can't. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> that. Uh, all right, listen. We'll take a break. When we come back from this break, we will do our awards. We've got lots of your messages as well. We'll take you to Germany and we'll take you to Saudi Arabia to talk about that fight. So there's still a lot to come here on the show. You're watching uh, Sports Zone on Joy Prime. We'll be right back. You're watching Sports Zone uh, live on Joy Prime. My name is Fentu Tahiru Fentu. I'm here with Sitio Fair, Philip Achim, and Daniel Kranting, uh, bringing you the best from the world of sports. The show is proudly sponsored by Kivo 4 in 1 Gary Mix. Uh, Gary Sokins have never been easier. Sokins are easy uh, indeed. Also brought to you by Syntex Tank, a strong, uh, a tough. If you're looking for a water tank for any project, Syntex Tank is your go to uh, water tank brand. And also, Johnny Walker, keep walking, uh, of course, the best brand of whiskey out there in the market. Uh, I told you that I've got your messages and I've got some awards. Prosper Aquite says, uh, from today, Danny K is no more the oracle or prophet. You, Fent, is the proper prophet. That's right. That ah. is me. After saying Fulham can be devil and it's things, look at why he has caused Arsenal fans. Never losing record is better than uh, never titles record. <laughs> uh, interesting. Uh, these messages are on Twitter, by the way, on the hashtag sports zone. That's where I'm reading these from. Uh, F0, the painter says, as for me, I don't think buying has had a worse season because it took an invisible team to take the league from their hands. This shows the level Bayern has set in the German league, F0, from Chebi Zongo. Big B, King Ghetto says, in life, there are ups and downs. And then he puts it in quotes and adds laughing emojis. Um, Mauna Braidu says, EPL Susum catch Danny Key. <laughs> <laughs> Kwame J says, um, Real Madrid did 92 points. 96 points, 100 points, and won La Liga once in that period. Liverpool did 97, 99, 92 points, and won the EPL once. Arsenal didn't smell 90 points, and they want to beat Pep Guardiola. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then he also said, we save harvest from Chelsea, bottled. Declan Rice is the best rice in the world, bottled. Odegaard was there when God was creating, uh, was creating. bottled. Saliba and Gabriel are more than Wall of China, bottled. Ben White is as white as snow, bottled. Arsenal have bottled pretty much everything, uh, he says. Interesting. <laughs> Let me read some messages on WhatsApp as well. Um, uh, the time is running really far, so I need to get as many messages across as possible. This one's a good evening, fan. Thank you uh, for a good show throughout the football season. Immediately, I have a score, Chelsea, uh, and celebrated. Arsenal lost the title at that moment because it was gross disrespect to us. <laughs> and we gave him Champions League. Uh, and when can he get that from Arsenal? Even Luton, Sheffield, and Sunderland will win the league before Arsenal. Greetings to all Chelsea fans. Uh, Castro is still from China. He's head. <laughs> <laughs> Castro, thank you for your message. Um, good evening. I think Pep is not a good teacher. How can you teach your student and never want him to pass the exams? Abu Bakr, Imi Sapayos from Kulmasa with that message. This message is uh, from uh, uh, Temperature inside Chibi in the Eastern region. He says, Caicedo's goal would have been a judge the goal of the season if not for that super bicycle kick by Garnacho. My regards to Daniel, my man, like no other. And Holland's man as well. All right, interesting. This message says, it's from Timothy in Bolga. He says, good evening, friend. You and your team are doing a fantastic job. Please, can you add <laughs> Coach Nimli to your team next season? Uh, we can't do that, uh, unfortunately. Coach Nimli works for a uh, competitor TV station. I almost said rival TV station. I have changed to the right adjective. Is it rival? Com competition, right? Yeah. It can be com competitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be rival. Yeah. Eko Kumsi from Nungwa Adogona says, Ha, ha, ha. Kai Havertz wanted to win the league title with his baby coach at Eta. They should watch for Chelsea in my beloved club next season. Interesting one. Hmm. Um, 
But what's going on in the English Premier League, they should make a law that Guardiola must coach Arsenal for three years, Chelsea for three years, United for three years, Liverpool for three years, so that winning the league will cut across all the teams. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that's a message from Raul in Azenti yeah. Mekwai. He says, I'm enjoying the show. That's a very interesting uh, perspective. Uh, good evening, Fento. I really love you. I love your guys and your show as a whole. But I think you should sometimes invite our friend, Coach Nimli. <laughs> Coach Nimli has popular fans. Okay, you know what? <clears throat> uh, all right, cool. Let's move on. Um, to other messages. Thank you for your message. <laughs> Danike, what is your problem? Read your messages. Okay, cool. Hi, right, good evening. Please wish my husband, Nana Kwame Ajman, aka Jemmy Check, a happy birthday. I pray the good Lord continue to bless him. This is from Eric Abwache Ajman. From all of us here at Sports Zone, happy yeah. birthday to, to Nana Kwame Ajman. From AK, Erika yes. Abwache. No, Abwache Ajman. Yes. Bwachi Ajman. Bwachi Ajman. Erika Bwachi Ajman so, to the husband, Nana Kwame Ajman. All right, so from, from, from wifey to husband. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Ah, wifey is more day. Finito. <laughs> Erika, thank you. So happy birthday to your husband. Um, somebody sent a message addressing Kofi, who sent the Leverkusen message. Yeah, yeah. And his message is simple. Kofi is a Chelsea fan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually true. That's Ajirafi, who sent that message. Interesting thought. Um... Farouk headliner inside Lakeside Estate. It's been a while, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a very strong finish from Chelsea. I hope we build up on that next season. I hope the rumor of Port getting sacked isn't true. Fent, I want to know who you think deserves to win the CAF Player of the Year. Uh, next season has to start. Then we'll see what happens at the end of it. Um, because Osimhen just got it like December, right? Yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Um, okay, someone just sent me. Uh, his awards, Ibrahim from Takwa, he says his signing of the season is Rice, his coach of the season is Unai Emery, his goal of the year is Ganacho, his flop of the year is Mudrik, his player of the season is Folding. As for Danny the Prophet, he took me high up and left me hanging, then dropped me. <laughs> it's Ibrahim. life and death in the power of the tongue. <laughs> Ibrahim, thank you. You have not been dropped, you are still there. Our good friend, Pep from Guardiola from Ontario, Hello, Canada, Canada, says... Leverkusen clears Arsenal's on beating run. Inv Leverkusen's invincible is better than Arsenal's. And he says, keep in mind that Bayern has won their league 10 years straight. So for someone to stop that is amazing. All right. Pep room. Uh, bedroom Pep Guardiola. Thank you for your message. Um, Godfrey in Kumasi said, while Leverkusen has achieved is phenomenal, but we football analysts know it's much more difficult to achieve invincibility in the Premier League because it's more competitive. When they do win the European Cup, however, they will have undisputed total invisibility, which may last for a long time for any team to break. 2003, Fair enough. how competitive was that? How, it was just Arsenal and... You had to beat Man United Man to United. win it. That was all. And it was not Steve, There was no top four. There was the there whole was top the, four. No, there was, there was, there was it the, was It was Arsenal and Man United. And when Chelsea, Chelsea became Chelsea, Arsenal dropped out of the conversation. Was yes. Mayu Chelsea. Chelsea was so City came through. Chelsea was there. Why is it? Chelsea were where? 2 or 2 or 3 or 3 or 4. There was no Chelsea. That was Abramovich. That was Ranieri's oh, no, first. They were second. They were second. Abramovich first. Yes. Chelsea yes. finished second. No, no, no. But the team to beat was Mayu. It wasn't Mayu. It was Price Package. Was Chelsea Chelsea and Man no, they were not Chelsea 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 Hold on. And then there is also the issue of people always saying the Premier League is competitive until Pep came in and made it the farmers. No, league. even before Pep, Ferguson had made the farmers league. He Thank was you. winning it Thank you. seven, seven so they only, times. They only use that when it suits them. Yes. It's a competitive league. Ferguson was beating the more Europa. You are playing Europa Thursday night. Yeah, I'm talking about Europa. I'm talking about you. You are playing Europa. You want to? <laughs> but but, but is a Europa League team. Uh, it is more difficult playing Champions League alongside the league and going and beating. In no Europa. You are doing in Europa. You are going to like very distant parts of Europe. Okay, guys, guys, guys. It's okay. It's Germany okay. and this team. Stone Germany away. Germany away. Germany away. Stone throw. Germany and Mod. You are going All to Moldova. Right. Uh, like hey, 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 hey! Please, please, please. How was he saying? Stone anyway, throw. This puzzle. Please. This puzzle. Uh, viewers. <laughs> You see, I was really your... I was you really your... He has let's, been to the Leverkusen before. I mean, I'm a Leverkusen fan. Eh, hey, it's not true. To be here, I'm going to be here. Israel, Israel, Germany. <laughs> Two hours. <laughs> oh, God. Ooh. Ghazali in Tamale says, uh, Good evening to Danny Kane. Oh, Ghanis, indeed, I'm glad we fought to the final day. Surely, for <laughs> our third coming, we'll conquer both domestic and European titles. 
I wonder why Chelsea fans are rejoicing. <laughs> Uh, Daniel is not a national fan, but he says regards to you, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they come. Um, okay, somebody says LOC is refusing to pay medical volunteers for African games. Doctors, EMTs, St. John's ambulance, Red Cross, and first aiders help us raise awareness to the national authorities for action. Pay the people their money. Everybody go collect. Everybody must hmm. take their money. Yet. Uh, somebody says Daniel's explanation is like Baumia. He didn't explain. Hey, 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 I beg you. Know you. This guy. <laughs> I beg you. I beg you. Oh my God! You can call me first person. You can call me. I beg but, you. Why is this is clever. I beg you. I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> you see my face is straight. I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. Yeah. Wow. All right, listen, guy. Uh, Inaki Williams has won the La Liga African Player of the Year. What's that? It means it's an award for the best African player in the La Liga. Sure. There are 69 Asian players in the La Liga. Your there point are 38 is... African players in the La Liga. Why, Why do they have a special award for Africa and they don't have for the rest of yeah, the no, The right problem species. is that the Asian people, their award don't have a sponsor. They should find a sponsor and come and do their own awards. The uh, so African the player oh, in the La Liga, no, it has... Uh, a sponsor. So no, but it's, no, but who should find a sponsor? The Asian players don't need Ah, so when they find a sponsor, they should do their own. They are, only, no, they, are only, they are only pretending to be, to be solving the racism issue that Africa and America. Pastor, uh, okay, you don't say, you talk it. Right. Do some for South Americans, some for North Americans, Africans, okay. North Americans. Guys, Africans let's do this and talk about the boxing, okay? No need. Our, pre our Premier League awards. Premier League season is over. Yeah. So here, I suppose, on, we came up with our own award scheme um, for certain parameters. We asked the guys, and we'll begin with Sicho. Uh, right? Yeah. So my coach oh, no, that, this is Daniel. Yes, okay. That's Daniel. Okay. Daniel, let's go through your coach of the season. Unai so, uh, uh, what do you call it? 10 second analysis on each choice. Go. Unai Emery, Aston Villa, uh, taking them to Champions League football. Incredible feat. Phil Foden, um, even the Premier League voted in player of the season. Top, top uh, season he had. Cole Palmer, obviously, signing of the season. What, 22 goals? How many assists? I think 10. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Mateta. My surprise of the season. He had what? Was it three goals? That's a good before? choice. Yeah. That's actually a very good choice. He had what? Three goals before Glasney came. Ten. He's banged double figures in goals. Excellent, excellent season he had. A flop of the season. I picked Enzo Fernandez because of the expectation. Last season was just six months, the second half of the season. And we expected big things from him. It just didn't work out. And uh, he himself okay. admitted that he's not been too good this, uh, for. Um, yeah, for Chelsea, surprise club of the season. That also goes to Aston Villa because of the work that Unai Emery did. And then disappointing club of the season, Manchester United, of course, from third to eighth, but they are happy, so um, good for them. Uh, my goalkeeper is Alisson. Um, he had a really good season, the highest save percentage in the Premier League, in fact. But for him, I think Liverpool would have been out of the title race before the running. Um, I go for a back three, Magalesh, Saliba, um, Arsenal's centre-back pair, and that's the best defence in the Premier League. Tarkovsky. It's interesting to know that Everton had the best, fourth best defence in did. the Premier League. They yes, did. after the top three, they followed. I actually almost picked Brightweight as my signing yeah. of the season. I, I picked Tarkovsky because yeah. obviously he was that what a uh, great senior guy. figure in the, at the back for Everton. Then I go with Declan Rice and, and Rodri for... Obvious the, choices. Yeah, obvious choices. Palmer, um, Foden... Bruno Fernandes, because, look, in as much as Man United was poor, well, Man United were poor through, uh, throughout the season, he did his job. One of the best creative players in the, in the league this season. And, so um, him over Odegaard. Yeah, him over Odegaard. Yeah. Um, Odegaard was playing for the team that finished second, still didn't create uh, chances uh, more than Bruno Fernandes. If Bruno Fernandes had Havertz or Haaland, he probably would have won the league or something. Um, Haaland... Uh, brilliant season again. And then Watkins. Um, okay. Goals and assists also. Brilliant for Aston Villa. Uh, my yeah. coach is... He ranks second behind Cole Palmer. Yeah. In, in total goal contributions. Finishing. Palmer, 33. He has the same as Haaland, 32. You... See right. you. Yeah, yeah, so let's go. Yeah, that's my, my coach. Of, the, of, of course, United Emery needs no explanation. Aston, uh, Aston Villa in Champions League. Phil Foden has been my player. Big games, he's scoring goals, he's producing the goods. He stepped in well for City when uh, Kevin, Kevin De Bruyne was injured. My sign of the season, though, is Cole Palmer. And my surprise play of the season as well is Cole Palmer. Okay. I mean, I, I Both didn't just make sense. Yeah, I didn't expect that in a struggling team like Chelsea, he would individually, on his own, you know, carry the team as he did, assist and goals and what have you. Cole Palmer, flop of the season, doesn't need any explanation. It does, actually. 
Because you don't, you didn't rate him before the start. So why are you surprised? No, so I'm still confirming it. I've, I've, <laughs> No, it's not, no. Yeah. The is not a surprise, though. It's a fact. Like it's not. It's, I'm not surprised, but it's a fact. It's not a it's, surprise flop. Yeah, it's, it's just. A, it's just a flop. flop. He has flopped. Finish. Like ah, okay. he has flopped since day one. <laughs> and he needs no explanation. It's a big flop. Everybody knows. No argument. Surprise club of the Aston Villa. Incredible achievement by them. Yeah. The standards all. And disappointing club has got to be my United. When they played in top four last season, won the Carabao Cup. This season they've been terrible, but they can save their season by winning the FA Cup. Meanwhile, my team of the season looks like this. Right, so Emi Martinez, for me, has been brilliant. It's not only about the saves, but the way he helps in organizing the back for Aston Villa. He's a big leader at the back. Malo Gusto stand me, he really did. He, he, he really did step in well for Chelsea at times, at left back, right back. And one of the best right back this season for me was him. Uh, Virgil van Dijk and Gabriel Magalhães with my center back. Virgil van Dijk because on the back of the season he had last season, I didn't think he had it in him to go on and play as well as he did this season. But for a long time this season, he actually looked like he was back to form until last few weeks that Liverpool capitulated. Gabriel Mangueles, what a player. And Vadio, I don't think there's any centre-back in the world who can assume the role that he assumed this season for City as he did. And, and since the turn of the year, he's been a different animal for, for Pep Guardiola's side. In midfield is Declan Rice, what a player he's been for Arsenal. Uh, Rodri, as always. That's going to be Phil Foden. So Phil Foden. Foden. Yeah, Correct. front three is Cole Palmer, what a season he's had. Uh, Erling Haaland and Oli Watkins. And of course, when you look at the Premier League top goal scorers, yeah. those are the three players who have banged in the goals and created Fantastic. a lot of chances. Um, I think a lot of the players overlap. Where's my uh, awards? So I'm not going to talk too much. The manager of the season, I think someone justified it. Cole Palmer, player of the season for me. Uh, the same with 40 million. Nobody expected that he would come and do the job that he did. So therefore, he's also my signing of the season. Surprise of the season, Kudus. We all knew his talent. I just didn't think that he would immediately go into the Premier League and impress as well as he did. Yeah. So good credit to him. Uh, flop of the season, Enzo Fernandez. I'm a Chelsea fan, but surely for 100 million pounds, he should be doing much better than he did this season. Uh, surprise club, Villa, of course. Disappointing. For me, it's Chelsea. One billion. Come on, man. Conference League next season. Yeah, Chelsea are going to go on and win the Conference League next season, but I'm not enthused about that. Chelsea, every time they play the lower... Would you not be enthused that be the first English club to have won all of UFS competitions? Yeah, I mean, that is a good piece of history, but I would rather win a third Champions League trophy than a Conference League title. Right. Um, what about the team of the season? Uh, I think it's very similar to what... Um, yeah, so basically the same uh, back three... There are three players from, 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 from this lineup that is in Zicho's team as well. But I put Saliba in there. I thought he had a really good season. Yeah. Van Dijk as well making it. Martinez, not, not a lot to say about that. The midfield too, I think, picks itself. Palmer folding Saka, I believe. Like, he didn't have a strong end to the season. But the reason Arsenal had been very competitive for a long time yeah. was because of Saka. So it, it was a tough decision. But I think, for me, I would put Saka there. Haaland and Watkins for obvious reasons. So that's, for me, my team of the season. Brilliant. All right, guys, uh, let's go down to Saudi Arabia then, shall we? Uh, because for the first time in the history of boxing, and especially in the four belt era, there was a unification with four belts on the line between Tyson Fury and Usyk. Uh, he says he won. 115-112. 114-113 for Usyk, then 114-113 for Fury. Split decision victory. Yeah. Thoughts yeah. on that? I, mean, I, th I think Usyk won. And, and to be fair, in the early rounds, it was, it was close. It was close. And maybe at that point, Fury was just marginally, was marginally winning it. But, but from the seventh round onwards, I just thought Usyk stepped yeah. it up. And, and that is why maybe... I mean, on a lighter notes, maybe then as, as those points were landing on the brains of, 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 of Fury, he lost, you know, the balance yeah. and, and the memory muscle to remember that he... He <laughs> wished people a happy new year. <laughs> Danike, we don't have a lot of time. Ten seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 the, the, the rounds that Fury won were very close. Yeah. Yeah. Those that Usyk won, he completely well, dominated. Yeah. So that's, I think that's, that was the difference at the end, really. It was Usyk for me. All right. Congratulations to him. Uh, Alexander Usyk, uh, unified champion for the first time since 1999 and the first four belt era heavyweight unified champion. Uh, we're building up to the Hits FM Rep Your Jersey. Of course, that is on 
uh, on June 1, I believe. I shall have taken us off. There's no point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's no point. Yeah, Paul. Ah, 